Okay, so why do airplanes even fly in the first place? This is something that's often taught at a high school level, a college level, and beyond, but oftentimes it's actually taught in a misleading way. I won't say that the other theories are completely incorrect, but they are misleading. And so we're actually going to hit two popular misleading theories, and then we're going to talk about uh, the most correct way to look at it. The first one that we're going to talk about is called the equal transit time theory. This one says you have two air molecules, and they're coming in together. One of them goes over the bottom of the airfoil, and one of them goes over the top of the airfoil. And if you're unfamiliar with what an airfoil is, this curved sideways teardrop shape, this is, if you were to take a wing and cut it down the side, this is what the side of a wing usually looks like. And the equal transit time theory says that both of these molecules take the exact same amount of time to reach the tail of the airfoil or the trailing edge of the airfoil. And in order to do that, the one on top has to travel further. So it has to travel faster. If it travels faster, we learn from something called Bernoulli's equation that we would have low pressure. And down here, we will have high pressure. And therefore, the high pressure pushes up and the airplane flies. However, this is actually not correct. The reason why we know it's not correct is because if we actually do tests on this, the air molecules don't line up together on the other side. They don't take the same amount of time to go across the wing. So now that we know that that first theory is incorrect, we're going to talk about the simple reflection theory. The simple reflection theory says, okay, we are going to hit the air really hard with our wing. And so we have air coming in, it hits the wing, and bounces off. And as you know from normal experience, and from physics, if you've learned physics before, if you hit something, that thing hits you back. And so if our wing hits the air, then the air is going to push the wing up. If our wing throws the air, or bounces the air down, then that air is going to, in turn, bounce the wing up. This is actually better than the equal transit time theory. It's along the right path. However, it's also misleading, because if you had an airfoil that was shaped like this, this theory predicts that it doesn't matter what the rest of the airfoil looks like. And you know, I'm, I'm sure you know from your own experience, that if you made a wing that looked like this, it wouldn't do so good. And so this theory is also debunked. So why does this work then? A lot of stuff that you've probably heard before we're telling you is misleading. And what we want to say here is that the real answer, or the better answer rather, is actually a lot more simple than a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about. If we take a wing and we were to look at the airflow over this part of the wing, remember this is a side view, we like chopped the wing, we're going to have air flowing around it like this. The air does not take the same time to go across the bottom as it does across the top. However, one thing is consistent. The air gets thrown downwards at the back of the wing. We actually have a name for this called downwash. You can learn more about that in some of our upcoming videos. The air gets thrown downwards because of a, a lot of different factors that come in with the airflow. And when the air gets thrown downwards, we learn from 
Newton's three laws, particularly from Newton's third law, the equal and opposite reaction, that if we throw the air down by using our wing, the air will in turn push us up. And the lift is actually generated by throwing air down or by diverting it downwards. And so in all airplanes that fly, if you were to actually be able to see the air, you would see that the air gets thrown downwards. And that throwing the air downwards is what gives us our lift.